Hello and welcome back to Proportunities. Well, the video we're going to look at today was actually featured on the BBC's home under the hammer around five years ago. It's basically a lovely Victorian building down in Margate that was converted into eight flats. It was in a bit of a sorry state of repair. Now we purchased the property, refurbished it inside and out, sold a couple of the units and kept some more for long-term rental. Let's see how we got on. Hello. Now the UK property market is worth millions and millions of pounds every year. Those are big numbers, but don't be put off by that. No, because auctions are a level playing field. They're accessible to everyone. All you need is a bit of cash and some confidence. Well, with tens of thousands of properties going under the hammer each year, there are usually a good selection to be found at most auctions. Mm, so here's what the bidders decided to go for when they put up their hands. Ten years ago, the words boutique and Margate would have struggled to share a sentence. But now, well, how times have changed. Take a stroll around the old town's quirky little shops before you pop to the Turner Contemporary Gallery or enjoy a coffee and cake at one of the harbourside cafes. Margate may still have its challenges ahead, but it's well on the way there. The town is certainly developing an arty, creative vibe, pulling in the day trippers and those looking to relocate. One particularly nice area of Margate is this grand square, lined with Grade 2 listed Georgian buildings. And yes, the property I'm here to see. When this grand square was built, it would have attracted the well heeled of Margate. In fact, according to the 1851 census, the inhabitants of these two houses were a fund holder and an attorney at law. And it's both of these houses that I'm here to see. And how times have changed, because they went to auction with a guide price of just 160 to 170,000 pounds. Now, you don't get all of them, unfortunately. They're split into eight separate flats and three are not up for sale. But still, what a lot of beautiful property for your money. The auction lot consists of five of the eight flats, but crucially, it includes the freehold to both buildings. So far, so good. Just to complicate things, some of the flats are already tenanted, so there are just two we can have a look at. And just my luck, they're on the top floor. OK, I've reached the top of the stairs. I'm right at the top of the building, which is the building on the right-hand side. Here's the entrance to the flat. And through an imaginary wall, I am now in the building on the left-hand side. And here we have the entrance to the flat. Let's have a look around. Well, you've got a fantastic kitchen, really good space in there. You can easily fit a little table in the corner. You've got the bathroom there. It feels very cosy. It's not grand. It doesn't have big high ceilings at all. You've got the lounge through there, which is not a bad space. And right at the front of the property, you've got a bedroom. It's quirky. It certainly has a little bit of character once you've got rid of all this wall chip wallpaper. But uh, look at this, a really nice window Gorgeous views of the square, and on a clear day like today, look, you can see right out to sea. I can see for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Lovely views, but imagine lugging your shopping up all those stairs. The flat next door follows a similar layout with a kitchen at the rear the bathroom next door and the bedroom and living room at the front, which I think might have all once been one large room. Well, it looks as though somebody's been patching up the ceiling in here. A bit of work has been going on. But having had a chance to have a look around, what would I do? First things first. 
I want to get rid of this wall, of course I do, because imagine the impact walking through here and having two beautiful windows, lots more light, double the space. You could put all your kitchen along the back wall there, which is currently being the bedroom. You could then move that bedroom to the kitchen area and get that out at the back of the property. It would be such a wow factor and so impressive when you open the front door and walk into a space like this. Now, I know the open plan isn't everyone's cup of tea, but in a small flat, one grand room can make all the difference to the feel. Going upwards, there's also a lot more space included in the lot. But before you get all excited, well, there may be a catch. This entire building is Grade 2 listed. Now, that grading doesn't mean you can't make changes, but any alterations will require listed buildings' consent. However, regardless of any thoughts about the attic, given we've only seen two of the five flats up for auction, this is still an impressive lot. What I love about these properties is this, this square. It makes a huge difference to the feel of the flats. They all have a wonderful outlook and how lovely to walk home every evening through here, surrounded by these other gorgeous Georgian homes. Just lovely. And the exterior of the building itself, well, just look at it, it's absolutely beautiful. The windows look like they're original. The brickwork is in good condition. The proportions are so pleasing to the eye. As far as first impressions go and so-called curb appeal, this auction lot has it in spades. Four one-bed flats and one two-bed flat and the freehold to both buildings for a guide of 160 to 170,000. Is this the good deal it seems? We asked a local estate agent along to tell us what he thought. My belief is that there'll be a long-term investment here for this property, whilst I appreciate that there's always potential for somebody to do something up and turn it around and sell it on. I don't think the market's quite recovered well enough for that to happen here. This sounds like a buy-to-let opportunity, so what kind of income are we talking about? When they're renovated, the one-bedroom apartments would rent for anything up to £475 per calendar month. If a two-bedroom was to be rented, I would expect it to achieve no more than about £525 per calendar month. Those top valuations would mean a total income of just under £2,500 per calendar month. As for resale value, the agent reckons that renovated flats would fetch £80,000 for the one bed and £95,000 for the two bed. So that would be £415,000. Of course, we haven't seen them all and the renovation costs would need to be taken into account. This lot is a lot of property for the money. And I think if somebody has faith in Margate's future and is looking for a ready-made portfolio, well, it could be the perfect fit. Let's find out who did buy it at the auction. This lot came almost at the end of the day, so who had the stamina to stick it out? 160 to start me. Or 150 then, I don't mind where we start. 150 I have, I've taken it there. So 150, 152, 152, and 5, and 7, and 60. 60 is bid, 62 no. At £160,000 I'm bid, you're out on the right. 162, and 5, and 7, and 70. Unsurprisingly, quite a few bidders were interested in this lot. We rejoined the bidding at 242,000. The bid standing at the back for the first time at 242, 243 and 244, sir. 244 and 245. 244 the bid against you at £244,000 for the first time, £244,000 for the second, £244,000 the bid standing at the back for the third and final time at £244,000. All done. Sold at £244,000. And the successful bidders at 244,000 were Jonathan on the left and his business partner and uncle, David. And even at £74,000 over the upper end of the guide price, well, I reckon these guys will think they've got a decent deal. I met them back at the flat to find out if that was the case. David and Jonathan, lovely to meet you today. Congratulations. Yeah. 
What an interesting lot this was. Yeah. Two houses for the price of one, but not quite. Quality period property. And you can't build, you just cannot build a property like this for the amount of money we've paid. So Absolutely. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? It is. And Jonathan and I had both been looking around at, you know, some of the seaside resorts around the south coast because at the end of it, you know, you've got really unusual properties and very, very cheap because the seasides are not really popular anymore. But. So why Margate? I used to come down here when I was when I was a child, as most sort of South London people Me did. Me too. Um, and I mean, this came up. We were looking through the the auction catalogue. This came up, popped down. And once I saw the square, I spoke to David, and we we had a good look at it and, and saw it was an offer, and, and uh, went along to bid. Jonathan currently works as a property manager, and David also has a background in property development. The pair have come together with a number of investors to buy this property, eventually hoping to rent it out. And they want to make the most of every nook and cranny. So they're hoping there might be potential in the attic too. It's a hike to get up the stairs, but you know the views. And then you've got to climb the views up even are more. at the top. Well, you, you, even on this floor, which is the uh, the last floor that's habitable at the moment, you know, you can see the sea. But if you get that little bit higher, what well, just one floor gives you a really good view of the whole bay. Do you think that you'll get the go-ahead for something like that on such a beautiful period building that has stood here for many, many years? We're not looking to change the building. We're just going to reutilise rooms which were once used for, for one form or another. Um, we've, we've initially spoken to the council. Um, you know, we've obviously got to go through the process and hopefully we'll work with the conservation officer and the local authority to, to see what we can get out of the building. So do you think you will get the go-ahead? I mean, I mean, if you can't go up, is, has it still been a worthwhile well, project? Well, yeah, overall, the project, we feel, is, is worth doing for the long term of just what's here at the moment. It, we're getting a, a reasonable, we hope, reasonable yield for the work that we'll, we will do and once they're rented out. It's a five-year minimum plan we feel. So so what budget do you guys have in mind for your work here, for your five <laughs> year plan? And let me just tell you we can't wait five years before we come no, back and see you. Yeah. <laughs> no, we hope to be we hope to be sort of ready in a lot a lot shorter term than that, um, in terms of occupation. It really depends on, on upstairs and what we can do, but it'll be between sort of twenty five and seventy five depending on what you know what, what we're allowed to do and what we can get away with. Flexibility is the name of the game here. They are thinking long term and short term at the same time. They have a tenant for one of the flats already and plan to renovate each of the others in four weeks. The only slight niggle I have is that although they own the freehold for the entire building, they don't own three of the flats. Is that an issue? It certainly didn't put us off because we value each and every flat in a building anyway. As long as, long as we've got the freehold, which is quite crucial. I mean, having the freehold gives us a little bit more potential to do what we might see as some future value for all the, all the building, not just our own flats. What's your next step? What's your next plan? Well, uh, when we leave here, I'll be popping across the road to the council to have a, have a chat with them and put in some, uh, get some pre-application advice, really, to, to really work out what we can and can't do. But hopefully, we'll, you know, we'll, um, we'll crack on and, um, and get it um, improved one way or another. And then perhaps we'll look elsewhere in Margate because it's, it's, a, it's a cracking town. There's a lot of people looking for homes and there's a lot to offer. I can't wait to see if you get the bonus flats on the top here. It's been lovely meeting you today. Good luck with this project. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. David and Jonathan have a fabulous lot of flats here and they've spotted some scope to extend. I can't believe it. It'll be interesting to see what they manage to achieve. Join us later in the show and you can find out. Well, we wait patiently for our purchasers to do the work on their properties and sometimes they make an amazing job of it. <gasps> and sometimes they don't do anything. <laughs> so what will be the story with the properties we've featured on today's show? Now to Margate in Kent, where earlier I met David and his nephew Jonathan. At auction, they bought five of eight flats in this impressive Georgian townhouse, as well as the freehold for 244,000, along with a group of investors. So what inspired these uncle and nephew business partners to make this particular purchase? So why Margate? I used to come down here when I was when I was a child, as most sort of South London people Me did. Me too. Um, and I mean, this came up. We were looking through the the auction catalogue. This came up, 
popped down and once I saw the square, I spoke to David and we, we had a good look at it and uh, saw it was an offer and, and uh, went along to bid. With Jonathan appointed as project manager, the plan was to renovate the flats. Some would be sold on, while others would be put on the rental market. Well, ten months later, we're back to see how they got on. Last time we saw the two top floor one bedroom flats. This time, we're back to see the two flats that have been renovated on the first and second floor. I think they've done a very smart job here. We stripped out all the existing fittings, the kitchens, the bathrooms, the carpets. Most of the plaster was hanging off the wall anyway. Um, I mean, we took them really back to almost a shell status and um, just, just brought them back to, to, to where they should be and how they are now. Because they own the freehold to the entire building, it's not just the individual flat they have to take care of. We've done quite a lot of work to communal parts, repairs to the roof, the rear garden, obviously the front of the building. Communal hallways have just been completely redecorated, recarpeted and repaired. So everything seems to have gone smoothly, but surely with a building this size, there must have been some problems. We had hoped to do something with the attic space, but uh, this is a listed building. There are always concerns via the uh, listed buildings uh, authority, but making sure that we do the right things if we want to do something. And that's where we started to hit one or two headaches, really. Mm. Yeah, initially, we submitted um, a plan to uh, perhaps add two new apartments to the, to the top, uh, or possibly one. And um, we spoke with the, the, the uh, pre planning application advice with the local authority, and the conservation officer wasn't really happy with some of the things we proposed. We reviewed it and we decided that perhaps the best thing to do, and something that we probably could have um, done, was to extend the existing um, flats and the top floor, therefore not creating any more units. Um, financially, that didn't really stack up at this time, although Dave and I have discussed it, and it may be something that we can do perhaps in five or ten years' time when the, when the market will uh, make it more viable. David and Jonathan were always realistic about long-term and short-term plans for this property, and so they've never been in a particular hurry. We've owned the building for about um, 10 months now, um, so probably actually a little longer than that, getting on for a year. Mm -hmm. So um, some of that has been with planning. There's probably a delay of three or four months while we were discussing that with the, with, with the, with the local authority. But it's not just about planning. There were, there were tenants in these flats, and, and we weren't in a position where we were going to you know, turf people out of their, their homes just so we could redecorate them. So, you know, we've naturally refurbished properties as and when they've come available, which is why now we've got two empty flats, but two that we refurbished first have already got tenants in them. The budget was equally flexible, depending on what they decided to do with the attic. But since they didn't go the whole hog, they reckoned 50,000 was a reasonable budget for the five flats in total. And there's just one flat remaining to be done. Yeah, I mean, that's something that, we're, that obviously I'm tasked with uh, policing to some extent. And there was some contingency, being that it was a listed building. Um, I'm pleased to say we pretty much came on bang on target. I mean, we've got a few bills to pay as yet, but it pretty much we spent what we expected to. Talking of figures then, David and Jonathan bought these flats and the freehold for the buildings for 244000 and spent their budget of £50,000. We invited along two local property experts to see what they thought of the properties. My first impressions with what they've done inside is very good. It's very clean, very tidy. It's a fairly basic refurbishment, but they, they've ticked all the right boxes. Looking around this property, I was very impressed. It's in very good decorative order throughout. It looks to have been refurbished to a high standard, and it's absolutely ideal for the sale or letting market. So with a total spend of 294000 how much could Jonathan and David realise if they were to sell all five flats? If the one beds were brought to the, the market presently, I would expect them to achieve somewhere between seventy and £75,000. I personally feel a two-bedroom flat could be worth anything up to £95,000. So with four one-bed flats and one two-bed flat, Using the lower valuations, that could give them a possible total resale price of 375,000, giving a total profit of 81,000 pounds. I think the valuation is uh, probably at the lower end of what we're expecting. We've had other agents in that said, um, you know, particularly in this location, the quality of the flats, to perhaps test it a little higher than that. 
but um, our, our sums were sort of done at that range anyway. Even so, I'd say an £81,000 profit is pretty good, but for the time being, it's the rental they're interested in. Let's start with the one bets. If the properties were brought to the rental market today, I would expect them to achieve somewhere between £425 and £450 per calendar month. I think a two-bedroom flat done to a sort of similar standard in this block would fetch anything up to around about £525 per calendar month. Which could give the boys an impressive yield of just over 9%. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, we're getting there or thereabouts. Um, I think Margate's got a bit of a ceiling in terms of rentals for one bedroom flats. So um, it's a very good return if you compare it with the likes of, sort of South London where we do a lot of our work. But um, I think that's fair. So it would appear that this grand investment has done all right for the pair. What's next on the cards for them then? Keep looking for nice quality buildings that have got a little bit of a... Uh, an interesting future that we might be able to take take advantage of, really. Yeah, I don't think we'll be relocating to Margate, but no. we'll certainly pick up any other sort of opportunities yeah. that we, we think are worthwhile in the area. I mean, 20, 25 years ago, there was a place called Brighton, which most people know about. I remember going to Brighton and thinking, God, these places are really cheap and nobody wanted them. And now Brighton's nearly as expensive as parts of London, so... You know, in fact, probably as expensive in most parts of London. So, you know, you can sometimes find a place that's out of favour. It won't be out of favour forever. So, as you can see, it was quite successful, and actually a bit more successful than the programme showed. Despite the valuations we received on the time, we actually sold one of the flats for 105,000 and another at 99, so about 30,000 more than they had predicted. And as for the rental, I think they said 500 pounds per calendar month. But that flat's actually been let out for £650 per calendar month for the last five years. So, as I say, don't always trust the agents and sometimes go with your own judgement and gut feeling. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a like if you did, and look out for other Opportunities videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.